In our free FileMaker video for this week, I want to show you a completely free and unlocked FileMaker tool made by one of the core FileMaker consultancies in the FileMaker community, Excelsis. Now Andy Persons is the developer at Excelsis who built this free tool and it's really clever. This tool allows us to easily create progress bars and implement them into our FileMaker solution. Now progress bars are those little bars that you see when you copy files or you do any sort of process in your computer that takes more than say five or ten seconds and you see this little bar that goes across the screen. Well as much as progress bars are a core of your computer experience they're not something that's built into the FileMaker platform. In fact the FileMaker platform has a built-in charting engine and progress bars aren't part of that either. In fact really to create progress bars you have to do some crazy hacks to get that to go or you have to purchase a plugin and install that, which has its own negatives, to be honest with you. I never try to really use plugins unless it brings you some sort of mission critical functionality to your product, like processing credit cards or maybe some sort of mission critical emailing capability. And then, of course, you need a plugin. Makes sense. Progress bars generally aren't mission critical, but they can be really handy. And if you can employ them into your FileMaker solution, without a plugin and do it pretty easily, well then hey, that's a great idea. So first off, there's a link below here in our description of the video where you can go to the Excelsis blog and download a fresh copy of this Progress Bar Gradients FileMaker file. Now this FileMaker file works with FileMaker 14. So while you can technically open it in FileMaker 12, it's not going to work for you there because it uses some new capabilities that were introduced and FileMaker 13. Now I could spend 20 seconds here and just tell you how to bolt this into your solution, but I want to spend about five minutes and give you a little bit of background on what this thing does and why it's so cool. First off, starting with FileMaker 13, there's this capability to decode Base64 text into an image. Now what is Base64? Well to the normal person, Base64 is nothing more than a bunch of garbage characters it looks like some three-year-old got loose on your keyboard at home. But in reality, the computer understands those to be the representation of an image or some sort of file. And you can take a string of Base64 characters and run them through FileMaker's Base64 decode function and have them converted into the appropriate image, maybe a Word file, maybe a PDF, maybe an Excel file. They can be anything. It's really cool. And because of this, you can do some amazing things. The Base64 technology is how Todd Geist and Geist Interactive built that new barcode functionality that we talked about in a previous video. Well, Base64 is how Andy Persons built this new progress bar. It's really, really cool. Now, there's really two parts of this solution. There's a part where you can actually build a gradient image, where you can decide what your progress bar is going to look like. Some of these progress bars are a little bit out there. Like this one right here is a little bit crazy. I don't think Microsoft or Apple or anyone would use a progress bar that looked like that. But using Andy's tool, you can actually create a gradient image that will occur at different percentage points of that progress bar. And this progress bar will adjust itself to hit those colors at those points. It's pretty slick. Now for the progress bar that I set up, I just used a blue progress bar over a white background. It's really simple and I had a practical need for this. So over here on this tab there's instructions on how to implement the progress bar. After you get the color of the progress bar that you want then you can click this tab here and follow the instructions. Well let me walk you through this real quick. I've been working inside one of our support databases and shooting a video for our training series and one of the new capabilities that we've deployed that I wanted to share with everyone was the ability to actually have FileMaker go out to a third-party service and validate an email address and let us know whether that email address was actually valid or not. As you can see here, I pressed a button and it verified that that email was valid. Now the email could come back as not sure or failed but I actually have quite a few records I need to validate here. So what I wrote is a scripted process that allows me to run 20 emails at a time. 
and I figured it would be really great if I could see a progress bar as the system ran through those 20 emails. Now as you can see, I've asked my system here to begin verifying the next batch of 20 emails. Now depending upon the email address or the domain of the email address, it might take it a while to actually verify these 20 addresses. Now I could write a routine that batches all 22,000 at one time, but there actually are some strategic reasons why I actually want this system to actually be able to do a batch of 20 and then pause and then come back later and do another batch of 20. Now as you can see right here, it's finding some that it can't perfectly confirm and then some that are actually failing outright. It just depends upon the situation. As you can see, the progress bar at the top updates automatically as the script loops through the set of records, keeping the user up to date on where they are in the process. So how do we set up the progress bar in our FileMaker solution? Well, it's really quite easy. What you're going to need to do, before you start gluing things into your FileMaker solution, first you're going to have to have a process that takes time to complete. Then you're going to need to think about, as that solution goes through that process, it must incrementally complete a lap or some sort of loop through the process where you can actually iterate a number field. Now, as you can see from the gradient sample file right here set up by Andy Persons, there is a progress number field right here. This progress number field is going to be the percent complete that you want the progress bar to show at any given time. So as your loop sequences, you're going to want that number to start low and then progress all the way up towards 100%. So that's your initial planning that you need to do. So now that you have a general idea that you have a loop and you know that you're going to have a sequential process where you can update data number field as to the percent complete, you're going to need to copy and paste a custom function using FileMaker Pro Advanced from the sample file here into your own FileMaker solution. So you can go there, you can say copy, the copy of the progress bar gradient custom function. That's the only custom function that you really need. Go to your FileMaker solution and paste it in. Next you're going to want to define three fields. You're going to want to go ahead and define the progress field right here that you see, that's your numeric field. Then you're going to want to define the back 64 field and the gradient 64 field. Now the progress field as we discussed before is simply a global number field. The gradient 64 field can be a global text field. It just depends upon how you're setting up your solution. In my situation where I set up my solution, I built all my fields to be globals because I wanted to put them in the header for my list view. And the best way to get fields to display in the header of a list view is to make them globals. That way you don't have to worry about what record you're on in the list view. All you have to do is make sure that you have updated values in those global fields. So I made my gradient 64 a global text field, my back 64 a global text field. Then lastly, I'm going to copy and paste this calculation field, which is actually our container field. The progress underscore bar is actually our container field, but it's a calculation with the container result. Also notice that it is set to do not store results, so it recalculates all the time whenever it's needed. Now if we've already copy and pasted in the custom function and these three fields, when you put in this calculation, these fields should all be wired in automatically. When initially setting this up, I recommend you keep the same names, at least initially, to get things going. Now the next thing you need to do is get an initial script going. Now I want to show you the script that I set up, at least the beginning of the script I had set up. And that is at the beginning of the script, before I start looping, I initialize the progress bar. And the way I do that is I load in the values I need for the background color of the progress bar and that gradient image. Now the background color that you can set, solid white turns out to be four forward slashes pretty straightforward. Then when I set up my blue colors the way I did, 
that turns out to create a one pixel wide, very narrow but long blue image. In fact, you can actually see that by coming over here, press the copy gradient image right here, and then go into a photo editing application, or maybe some sort of preview application. And you can see that setting this up right here caused Andy Person's sample file to create a one pixel wide by 100 pixel long image. That image is spread out and resized in the container to create this blue right here that you see. Now that image is deconstructed down into the base 64 text. And that's what we have right here. That field here is what we call gradient 64. It's a field that we already put in. So back 64, in my case, is the white, and gradient 64 is the base 64 representation of my blue. So all we need is the container, the custom function, the location of where we're at, the background color, and this right here, which is our gradient 64. This is the actual image, but it's in base 64 format. Then what I do is I run these set field commands right here that sets those globals in advance of my script running. It sets the white background, it sets the blue right here, and it sets the initial progress bar value to zero. Then down below I do a find to find all the emails that need to be processed in my system. And then we have a loop that starts. And every time the loop runs, it sets the value of the progress bar equal to the loop counter times five. And that's so we get good distribution. Remember, we're only gonna run the loop 20 times. So 20 times five is 100. So as we get to the end, which we know is 20, we want that progress counter to be 100. So five times 20 is 100, pretty simple. I put a slight pause in here to force FileMaker to do an update. It's one of those sort of things that you have global fields and headers. FileMaker doesn't always do a refresh like it's supposed to. Feel free to play with this all you want. But the only way I got FileMaker to really guarantee a good solid refresh was to give it a short pause of 0.2 or 0.5 seconds just to guarantee that progress bar was getting a good refresh. So that's basically it. You got your background color in a base 64 format. You got your blue one pixel by 100 pixel wide image right here. You got your container which references that custom function and the percentage right here. Then the custom function basically takes these three elements right here, figures out the overlap of overlaying them together, and then gives you a complete image at the end. It's pretty straightforward, it's really cool, it's easy to implement. And I want to commend Andy Persons and the folks at Excel Assist for doing a great job in bringing a fairly complex solution down to a very understandable and simple level. Now of course this would be great if it was built into the FileMaker product itself, but this really helps bridge the gap for a missing function within the platform. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email Excelsis or email us here. And I'd love to see what you've done with their gradient solution.